Hey guys, today I'm going to be showing you this DIY motion activated light that I put together. Uh, it's fairly simple on the front of it here. I think it actually looks kind of cool too, but you got a ring of LEDs around it here. You've got 12 little standard water clear LEDs. Would probably work better with diffused LEDs. Uh, you get more of a floodlight effect. This kind of makes like a uh, spotlight, but that's alright. It's good enough for what I need it for. You got a PAR sensor here. This is a uh, Parallax Model B. You can see the red lights in the back of it are illuminating because it is detecting motion right now. But the lights won't turn on unless it's dark out. And we have a CDS cell up here so we can detect the amount of light that we have. So if I go ahead and cover that up, those LEDs will turn on there. You see the ring of them around there. This entire thing sits in a 3D printed case. It's got, it runs on uh, four AA batteries, which from my rough calculation should last a bit over two months. So I think that's pretty good. And in terms of the actual brain of this thing, open it up in here. Get an AT Tiny 85 microcontroller running this whole thing. Um, also, an AT Tiny 45 would work just as well, and those are a little cheaper. So I'd probably, all I had on hand was the 85, so if you have an AT Tiny 45, I'd probably just use that. But in here, this is pretty simple. We just got a transistor to switch the LEDs on and off. Uh, resistors over here for the LEDs. This is a pull-down resistor for a little CDS cell. And we have the battery box here, which has its own on-off switch on it. Now that uh, AT Tiny microcontroller is set to go into sleep mode. And the two halves of the case just press fit together, by the way. Like that. But anyway, that little AT Tiny microcontroller goes into sleep mode. And it wakes up every second and checks if there's light. And if there's not light, it'll go back down into sleep mode. And that saves a lot of power. It makes a big difference in the battery life. So it's set to go into sleep mode. Like I said, it should last a bit over two months. Uh, in terms of print settings on this case, I use 20% infill and 0.2 millimeter layer height. And all these LEDs just press fitted in there. They don't have any glue on them and they're pretty sturdy. Like I said already, the case press fits down to the, uh, the two pieces of the case press fit together. I did have to uh, widen that hole out for that little CDS cell a bit. And that sensor's glued in, but... I printed this with ABS plastic, it probably would have worked a lot better with PLA. And when I say worked a lot better, it wouldn't have uh, warped like this in the bottom there, if you can see that. I think PLA would help with that. But uh, if you're curious, uh, you know, why would you build your own motion activated light? Because this cost about the same or possibly a little bit more than just buying one. Um, one of the reasons is, if you wanted to, you could put a different color of LEDs here. You could make green LEDs or red ones or whatever you wanted to. Like, uh, like even a Christmassy sort of thing. And also, since it's got a microcontroller in there, you can do all kinds of different things with the LEDs. You could uh, flash the LEDs, you could make them uh, kind of pulsate in and out and use a PWM on the microcontroller. You can do all kinds of different stuff with this. I've just, all, the code is included in the Thingiverse page, but I've just done a very simple, the LEDs turn on for 30 seconds and then they shut themselves back off. So there we go. And this is actually surprisingly bright just for 12 LEDs here. I had it in a dark room yesterday and it was actually, uh, last night it was lighting up quite a bit of it actually I was pretty surprised with that 
just for the 12 LEDs. It might even be brighter than a store-bought one, but it, I'm not entirely sure. Now, I also have another video of this thing, which is a build video, and I go over kind of step-by-step -step how this entire thing gets put together, and also how the code works and things like that. So if you want to see exactly how this works, you can go and check out that video. But uh, this is just a basic overview of it, kind of what it does, and what you can do with it. And also, just a suggestion here, or an idea, if you put a different color of LED in here, you could also print this case out in a different color. So if you had a red LED, you could print it a red case for it. So... I'll just spin this around and kind of give you an idea of what it looks like. If we open that up there, we can see the back of the PIR sensor here and then the back of my little homemade circuit board. And the battery box in there. So, I'll update the description of this video as well as the uh, description in Thingiverse uh, when the batteries actually die on this thing. Right now, they've been going for a few days. Which isn't very long, but once these things actually do die out, I'm going to update that page in the description in the Thingiverse page. And also, in the description, you can find a link to the build video of this, and you can also find a link to the Thingiverse page. So, go ahead and check those out if you're interested in uh, printing one of these yourself and making one. You can go and look at that build video. And also the Thingiverse page so you can get the files. So, anyway, that's it for now, guys. Bye.